Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for SPSS. This screencast covers section 11.3, one-way non-parametric ANOVA, sometimes called the Kruskal-Wallis test. It also includes 11.4, post hoc testing following a non-parametric one-way ANOVA. This test asks if three or more independent data samples can be considered to be samples from a common population. A significant result indicates that this is unlikely and a post hoc test can be carried out to identify which samples vary to such an extent from each other that they can be considered to come from different populations. This test is a non-parametric test. If you do not understand what this means then please see my screencast Is My Data Normally Distributed? In the example we are using here Eight quadrats were sampled for the number of daisy plants growing in four distinct grassed areas with different uses at the University of Worcester. These areas were the cricket pitch, the lawn, the quadrangle and the rugby pitch. The data can be found in table 11.4. I have already entered the data into SPSS. Please see the web walkthrough for more details on how to set the variables up. Please note that the web walkthrough details a simpler method of doing this test but the advantage of the following method is that it will also do the post hoc tests for you. To do the non-parametric one-way ANOVA we go up to Analyze and click a sub-menu drops down. It's a non-parametric test so we go down to Non-parametric tests. It has four independent samples so we go to the sub-menu and click Independent samples and the following window opens. At this point you could click Run and SPSS will make an educated guess at the test that you need to analyse your data. However, we know the test we want to use, so I'm going to click the Customise Analysis radio button. I'm now going to track up to the Fields tab and tell SPSS which variables I want it to analyse. The Test Fields variable is the number of daisy plants, Bella perennis. I'm going to select that and enter it into the Test Field box using the selection arrow. We're going to divide that data up into four groups and the information for that is stored in the location variable which I'm going to select and I'm going to enter it into the groups box. I'm now going to go back up to settings to tell it which test I want to use. I click the settings tab, I click the customize test radio button. You can see it has several tests including the Crusco Wallace one-way ANOVA. I'm going to tick the box. It also allows me to select how I want to compare the data afterwards using the post hoc test. I'm going to leave it as all pairwise. I'm now going to track down to run and the analysis window will open. We can see here that SPSS has given us a significance of 0.002. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. A significance of 0.002 means we can reject the null hypothesis, and SPSS has told us that. We now need to know which other grass areas differ from each other. If we click on this box, we get another window opening, which gives us more information. We want to go down to View, click the arrow and select Pairwise Comparisons. We then find we get a table telling us which other comparisons are significantly different. In this case, it is the cricket pitch versus the quadrangle and the cricket pitch versus the lawn. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.